Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello Scott. Josh, my friend, the Halo news train does not abate for anyone. Um, this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, it kind of in a good way, but also in an absolutely ridiculous way. Um, 343 Industries um, is getting Joseph Staten back. Now, he's the one of the most legendary, iconic figureheads at the heart of the original Halo trilogy, um, responsible for all the cutscenes, responsible for helping out with the scripts on all three games. Basically, the reason Halo matters is, you know, it's a large part to a lot of people, but he's one of those people. Um, and he left Bungie back in 2013. He's now, um, he's been working on various Microsoft projects for the last few years um, and just part of getting Halo Infinite back on track and um, he's now back in charge of overhauling or back in charge of the campaign and um, which sounds like it's very much getting overhauled um, which is just crazy what's your thoughts on this I kind of can't believe that something that was this close to launch is now yeah. getting like a new project lead and um, to the point where it sounds like it, it should have had this years ago like it sounds ridiculous definitely yeah, I mean, I, my, my mind goes back to this report, this apparent leak that I read on um, Reddit before Halo Infinite actually got delayed, but after there was kind of a mm. backlash. And it went mm. through kind of like point by point from an apparent insider or whatever, and they were saying the game's going to get pushed back to 2021, which eventually came true. They mentioned a few of the internal problems which have since been rumoured even more, but they also said in there, which is why I discredited it, that apparently Microsoft were consulting with Bungie and former Bungie employees mm. to get the project back on track. And at the time, I'm pretty sure we talked about it. We were like, nah, there's no chance they'd be doing that kind of behind 343's back because, you know, 343, they should have some confidence in them. But to get, mm. you know, this executive back on board to come back and kind of help steer a ship that um, they were once so instrumental in, you know, building and solidifying, like, mm -hmm. it makes sense from a business perspective perspective but it just it is mad like you mentioned you know they they lost 343 lost the creative director on Halo Infinite last year they lost another one you know a few months after that mm -hmm. and that space has kind of seemingly been vacant for a long time and it's just made me think what have they been doing were they just pushing forward with that initial vision to get something out and this mm -hmm. is going to be the major overhaul it needs but the major a major overhaul like something like that doesn't come together quickly so for no. me this thing feels like it's still a long way out and it makes me wonder whether they're going to go back to that original idea of selling the game or at least releasing the game in kind of pieces if they're going to have the multiplayer mm. portion done because that's going to be free to play anyway and then drop the campaign later on down the line i don't know if they can get away with that but you imagine bringing someone like this on this late in the game it's going to be a major kind of um reshaping or you would assume it, like this person's not just coming in to kind of you know polish up what's already there mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I pretty much don't think you can even, like, considering how much the Series X was, like, where, you know, the return of Halo, and it's just it's just so much part of the Microsoft branding, the Xbox branding. Like, if they get any Halo out of the door within a yearly window from now, um, I'll kind of class that as a win, or they should class that as a win. Because um, I just, I don't know, it feels like they're going to Street Fighter V it, where it's like, let's just get something mm. out the door, um, something that we can work on, and we'll plug the narrative in later. Um, but that kind of opens up the whole question as to why do you play Halo? For me, like, unlike Call of Duty, it's always been mainly campaign-focused, and the more player is there too but like over the years it's what's going to happen next how this how is the story going to unfold it was a huge deal when you know finishing the trilogy and finishing the fight uh, back in like 2007 or whatever um it's just such, it's in such a weird spot i do think that they'll still do the free to play 120 fps thing um to yeah. just have something for people to play um, and maybe then do the campaign in time with the 20th anniversary because at least that's at the end of next year but that does mean that you have a, a, a new console that was initially going to launch with this thing as part of the value proposition um not dropping for another year um um, for me, it's kind of like, it's it's almost like a Suicide Squad situation. It's like, why don't you just announce a 2022 date or something way off in the future? And if it comes mm -hmm. together faster, then cool. Um, I just don't see... I don't see how you bring in a new project lead, a new creative director kind of guy, and don't overhaul something to the point where it, it's going to need years worth of, uh, you know, new yeah. lines being recorded and, and scenes being like, captured or whatever, um, and different characters being brought in. I just, I just do not... I, I don't see it coming before the end of next year, but that's just me. Yeah. I mean, it makes me wonder what shape the uh, campaign was is in like currently. You know what I mean? Like it mm. was originally going to release in about two what two months time or so. So if yeah. I, I don't know, was this something that was almost complete and just wasn't very good, or is it something that was a complete shambles and Microsoft was hoping that it would come together and stitch together in the final few weeks or something? Like I mm. don't know what state the campaign is currently in, and I wish we kind of did. And it makes me wonder about like the management, not just in three four three, which sounds like it's it's been a complete nightmare but from like mm -hmm. the top level of microsoft as well like mm -hmm. this is a major 
a major, major game for them. And we always say, you know, a delayed game is always better than, you know, uh, a, a rushed one or whatever. But at the same time, like... <laughs> Unless it's from Watch Dogs. A, but yeah. Unless you're Watch Dogs. Unless you, well, with, with some exceptions, you know what I mean? But when it comes <laughs> to, like, Microsoft and they're shipping a new console and they've got these brands that they should be looking after, like, mm. at what... I, I, where does the book stop? How far up the ladder do you have to pass the blame to get mm -hmm. to whose fault this really is? Because, you know, well, I, 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 love, I love Phil Spencer, man. I, I, yeah. do, I do like him and I, I respect him a lot and I like the ideas that, ha that he's had, but I keep having to put faith into him, into him and I'm not seeing that pay off yet. You know, I quite like mm -hmm. where Microsoft is, but it's like they're making a lot of weird plays and I'm just constantly deferring this this moment where I'm expecting him and the Microsoft team to deliver, and that just keeps, mm. seems to keep getting further and further away from me. Well, I would, I would, I mean, we've still got the big old Jason Schreier Bloomberg report to come, like the full, the deep dive thing that he's sort of tweeted about that he's putting together, talking to various people uh, anonymously to sort of, you know, get to the heart of exactly what's happened across the last few years. So that whatever that is, assumedly, will be pretty illuminating. <clears throat> Excuse me, but even that is very much based on three four three stuff. Um, whereas, like you said, the Phil Spencer side of it is fascinating because if you switch over to the Sony side, shoot he or she is very much involved in checking in on all these different teams and there was the whole thing where he checked in on God of War's development and hated it the version that was coming together for that and um, walked out the room couldn't believe the version of Kratos that they were doing etc um, and so I guess there is a certain level of trust between these sort of overseer people on the publisher side checking in with different studios um, and mm -hmm. on the company side and so on in Phil Spencer's case like he seems like a very easygoing guy like it seems like he's just you know everything will work its way out don't worry cross platform you know we're going to go with streaming or whatever everything's for everybody don't worry about it um, um, and I just, I wonder, yeah, I wonder, like, how much is him just going, like, well, I trust you guys to get this right. And then when the rubber hits the road in the three months or two months before launch, um, it, the, the product isn't there. And he's like, oh, that that sucks. And then this mm -hmm. feels so, like, such an immediate course correction. It's like, right, you guys clearly need a creative director, someone to um, bring about focus across the whole team, um, especially in a, a narrative sense. Um, and also I've seen on Twitter there's various other um, third-party studios being brought in as contractors to help get this over the finish line. So it's suddenly become this, like, Herculean effort, um, but that is such a humongous manage, like a managerial oversight because you could have been doing this months ago. And like you said, when you first read the report, that was ages ago. So it's it is a it is a big mistake, really. And it, to be completely honest about it, it is, and it's it's it, it sucks. I feel like we've done so many Halo videos recently, and it's just all negative. But like the news <laughs> yeah. is just negative, and it's so much of it is coming out at once. And every every single time we do one of these videos. 343, you know, the, the studio will release some kind of new statement or some kind of new FAQ answering some of the issues. And mm. I found some of those to be a to be a bit lacking as well, you know, when it was it, it revealed or reported that apparently, you know, the leads had been focusing on a Halo TV show. There'd been like loads of outsourcing and stuff like yeah. that. You know, they came out and said, look, our focus isn't on the Halo TV show, but they kind of didn't answer all the questions adequately to my mind, you know what I mean? There was still yeah. a lot left ha hanging, you know, like, well, what about the outsourcing? What about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. To what extent has this played? It felt very kind of wishy-washy just from a PR perspective. And I, I, I don't know, maybe because like, maybe, maybe there needs to be someone to come in and just take charge, hopefully, and just kind mm -hmm. of like have this messaging on point, make it so it's not just this reactive thing. Cause that's what it's felt like so far to me is this very reactive kind of production, at least in the past few um, mm. weeks and months, you know, we had the big well, trailer, they were very reactive to that. We had the reports coming out, they've been very reactive to that, but we've not seen anything. We've not seen any kind of action. That makes sense. No, and on Staten's part as well, <clears throat> part of his tweet confirming what's happening, he was like, I have a lot of catching up to do. Like, I just, I can't imagine that. Like, just, it's it, we, it's five years since Halo 5, and obviously they've been working on the Master Chief Collection and um, putting out different versions uh, or remastered versions of like Reach and ODST. And like, there's all that stuff, but like, he has to walk into a project that is very much in motion and suddenly try to reassume a role that he was given from the beginning in the old games and try and like wedge himself in and be like, okay, well, this needs changing. Don't do this anymore. Do this instead. It's just going to be insane. It's, it's a bit like the Joss Whedon Justice League role, which obviously didn't go very well. Um, it does but hopefully, feel like that. yeah, it just feels like bringing someone in. It's and you see it a lot in, especially in Hollywood, uh, the last few years with things like the the way that Rogue One was sort of completely pivoted or solo or whatever in the Star Wars space. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. Um, but it seems like, yeah, it's hopefully he can bring it together. Joseph Staten is a is a great dude, and like, yeah, there's he's various projects that he's worked on that have come out pretty well on the other end, especially yeah. in the writing department. Um, so yeah, let us yeah. think down in the comments below. What's your general thoughts on the state of Halo, and does so, uh, can someone like Joseph Staten bring it back together? And also, what are your predictions on the potential release date? For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.